Right, we're going to continue with our previous example, but just change it a little bit. That is the example A plus 2B reacts to form 3C, occurring in a constant volume batch reactor. Now we are going to assume that the kinetics are first order in A and first order in B. In other words, that rate A is minus K C A C B. And what we'd like to work out is how the concentration of A changes with time. Right. What we see is we have a relation, or the rate depends on both A and B, and so we're going to have to find a relationship between them. Um, what we need to know is what the feed composition is. And so let's say initially we fill up with one mole of A and say two moles of B. In other words, we put in stoichiometric quantities of A and B. Now what we know is that if we look at the number of moles of A reacted, that is Na0 minus Na, and compare them to the number of moles of B reacted, that for every two moles of B we react, we react one mole of A, and so we would put the two in there to show that that's the same, and would give us um, the relationship between A and B. We can write this in terms of volume, Oh, sorry, concentration, and so what we could say is that would be 2CA0 minus CA is equal to CB0 minus CB. And from this initial condition, sorry, let's go back over here. This initial condition implies that CB0 is equal to 2CA0. And so if I compare what I have written here, I see that I can cancel those which gives me that CB is equal to 2CA. Right, having done all of that, we can now go and look at the batch reactor and a constant volume batch reactor is described by DCA DT is equal to RA which is minus K C A times C B, but we've just worked out that C B is 2 C A, so that would be a squared and a 2. We can now integrate, and again we combine the terms in, that depend on C A together to integrate, so we say that's D C A of a uh, C A squared is equal to minus 2 K D T. Um, let's integrate between limits for a change. We started off with CA0 and we'll stop at CA and initially it's between 0 and T. So this implies the integral of 1 over CA squared is going to be 1 over CA with a minus and between limits CA0 and CA is going to be equal to minus 2K. We can take those out the integral because they're constants and if we integrate dt, it'll just be t, so that'll give us t. So that becomes um, 1 over ca0 minus 1 over ca is equal to minus 2kt. And there we have our answer, uh, has our ca changes with time. Right, I want to take example 2 and just change it a little bit. Um, and I'm going to call it example 3. It's still the reaction A plus 2B goes to 3C, uh, occurring in a batch reactor, constant volume. The kinetics are still that we're first order in A and first order in B. In other words, that is still our rate equation. And we still want to know how CA changes with time. The only change I'm going to make is that rather than starting with one mole of A, Let's say, for example, we start with two moles of A. And so we start with equimolar quantities of A and B. Um, therefore, what we would say is initially the concentration of A would be equal to the concentration of 
be. Now, what difference does this make? Let's carry on with the maths and have a look. The next thing we did was the mole balance. We said that the number of moles of A used up times 2 must be equal to the number of moles of B used up by reaction. And because we're a constant density, we could divide by volume in all cases here. And so we could change this to concentrations. But what isn't true anymore is this equation. We have to modify it. Um, what we know is CA0 is equal to CB0. So if we rearrange this equation, we would end up with that would be 2CA plus CB minus 2CA0 or Oops, that's a B naught. Let me just check I've got our signs right. So that is minus 2A naught. Yes, I think I've got that right, right, that right, right. So that's 2CA minus CA naught. Right. Right, so continuing, we have our rate expression, which was minus K CA times CB, which is now 2CA minus CA0. Right, so what has really changed by us changing our feed conditions, or initial condition, what we fed into the reactor, is this expression. It looks a little bit different. How do we go about solving that? Right, so what we do is we combine the CA terms together, so that would give us CA over 2CA minus CA0 is equal to minus K dt. Now, how do we integrate that left-hand term? Right, now one of the other problems I find that people struggle with in reactors is all the maths you've learned up to now, you actually need to know. You need to know your mass balances, energy balances, and the maths. And unfortunately, um, if you're struggling with one of those, you really have to put some effort in, go back to your notes, uh, read up how to do it. Now, integrating that, we're going to need partial fractions. What do we need here? We have to split this into two partial fractions. So what we've got to do is I'll just show us the maths on the left-hand side here. 2CA0, uh, sorry, that's a 2CA minus CA0. We have to write in terms of two fractions, CA plus B, 2CA minus CA0. And what we've got to do is find the values for A and B. So what we're going to write, do that is then write that 1 over CA, 2CA minus CA0, is equal to A times by 2CA minus CA0 plus B CA. In other words, we're going to find a common denominator. And we can then eliminate the denominator and then compare the numerator. And so what we get is that 1 must equal to, and I'm going to multiply out, 2ACA minus ACA0 plus BCA. I'm just going to move the page up a little bit. Now what we've got here is we've got a term, two terms that depend on CA and one that is a constant. So what we can say is the constant term must be equal to 1 because that's also a constant. In other words, A is equal to 1 over CA0. And if we look at the two terms that depend on a, CA, there's no CA term on this side. So that term plus that term must be equal to naught. Or naught is equal to 2A plus B. Therefore, B is equal to minus 2A, which is equal to minus 2 over CA naught. Right. Let's go back to what we were trying to integrate. Now we know this left-hand term, we can write that as um, it's A, which is 1 over CA0 CA, plus 
plus the B term is minus 2 over CA0. 1 over 2 CA minus CA0. DCA is equal to minus K DT. Right, now we can integrate uh, the left-hand side. That'll give us 1 over CA0 lin CA. And the other term over there, I'm going to just multiply the minus in. And that will give us the lin of CA0 minus 2 CA. And there'll be a 2 over there, and those two 2s will cancel is equal to minus kt plus a constant. Right, let's just move this again to give ourselves a little bit more space. Um, constant, right. Our initial condition at t equals naught, ca equals ca naught. And so what we're going to get is 1 over ca naught, the lin of ca naught, plus 1 over ca naught, the lin of CA0 minus 2 CA0 is equal to the constant. Right, if I now subtract this term from that term, or substitute the constant in, whichever way you want to think of it, I'm going to get 1 over CA0, the lin I'm subtracting the CA and the CA0, so that becomes that. Plus 1 over CA0, the lin of CA0 minus 2 CA. And this bottom term here is a minus CA0. Is equal to minus KT. So that's the expression we were looking for. Uh, let's just see if there's if it makes sense. At if CA is equal to CA naught, this term over here becomes one. That term over there it becomes also one, and so T equals naught. What happens as T approaches infinity? for a long time. What would you expect as your answer? Does CA tend to zero? No, it doesn't. What I'd like you to do is check, let's go back to the mole balances and let's move this on as well. Remember we have one mole of A that needs, uh, reacts with two moles of B but we've only put we've put in equal quantities of A and B. So what's going to happen for a long time? Well, we're going to run out of B. And so CA should then tend to a half CA naught. What I'd like you to do is check that this solution in fact gives you that for a long time. Thank you.